I love working in continuous deployment workflow, but you need to make sure that you're safe doing that. So I want to show you how we use Sleuk to not only implement continuous deployment, but do it in a safe way that gives me confidence when our code hits production that it is high quality. This one is one of my favorite ways that we use Sleuth to do more with less. So let me give you a little bit of background. So we use CircleCI to actually do our deployments. Let's find a deployment that happened here. When code is merged to master, we run all of these checks and build an image. Then it automatically goes to staging. Once it's on staging, then it stops. And CircleCI says, do you want to continue to prod yes or no? So the usual way that people implement this is you have to go into circle and you have to click that approve button. And then once you click approve, then it goes to production. But there's a couple things that need to happen there. One is you need to know that it went to staging. Two, you need to know that it's healthy on staging. And then three, someone actually has to click the button to make it go all the way through. We wanted to automate that. And so we used a feature of Sleuth to do that. So what you're looking at is what we call a rules file. Sleuth has this feature, what we call it is Sleuth Actions. So in this action, when a deployment is deployed to staging, when it does not have a label of quick fix on the pull request, then send a message to a Slack channel. Hey, do you want to deploy this production? If people click yes, then run this build. So our test and deploy build, auto approve. Remember that was an approval step in Circle CI. It'll automatically go call Circle and approve that build, which is really cool. And then it will send a message to Slack that says, hey, the build was promoted. So by automating it, you're cutting out hours, potentially days of work, not actual work, but clock, clock time work, which is going to further optimize your process because that's what optimization is all about, efficiency about finding ways to cut out all those parts that aren't doing anything, all the dead wood. But we wanted to take it one step further. So we have this rule called stage to prod auto. Now, when it goes to staging and it is not labeled as a quick fix because we do have a special process in case we really need to get something out there and no one has vetoed it. And oh, here are the next two parts of the exciting part. If the health is healthy, and it has been deployed for more than five minutes. That's really important. So because remember that Sleuth is not only tracking the deployment, but it's tracking the health of that deployment. But what we're doing here is we're saying, when it's on staging, track Sleuth, please track all these different measures of health. Track them for at least five minutes. If it's all still healthy, then automatically approve the build and deploy it. So right there, we have implemented completely automatic deployments from staging to production, but with the confidence knowing that our deployment on staging was healthy. So let's share what it looks like for us. Here's one where you did the deploy. So you remember in the Sleuth YAMLs file, we said, send a message. Do you want to deploy to production, approve or reject? This is what it looks like. So a developer can always go into Slack and approve or reject it right there without having to touch circle, without needing to go into build system, just live in Sleuth. The other thing I just want to show you while we're here is this kind of stuff. So this is Sleuth telling Slack that a build happened. Where it gets interesting is this part over here, which is Sleuth detecting the health of it. And so Sleuth will monitor it for a while. And then once it detects it's healthy or later it detects it's unhealthy, it'll update the thread of the message in Slack. And this is probably, and I didn't put a point for this, but this is probably one of my favorite uses of Sleuth to just save us time is to proactively notify the developer who did the change that their change was unhealthy. Because what you're not seeing here is that if it was unhealthy, Sleuth would have also sent a personal slash message to me to tell me that my code was unhealthy. So right there, my mean time to detection, which is a key component of improving quality, goes to almost zero because Sleuth detected an unhealthiness it let me know immediately. I'm the one that did the change. So I'm the one that's in the best position to understand the actual issue and to fix the issue. And since I just did the deployment, it's already all still in my head. So your ability to recover from failure when it does happen is so much improved because of automation. So just to kind of complete that story is if we go back to our Sleuth and if you're wanting to know more information about Sleuth actions, 
If you go to your help button and you click on actions, you will see all the different things you can do. Because again, it's not about taking something hard away. It's about taking something that takes a lot of wall clock time and just allows things to get out of sync. And when things get out of sync, you don't trust them. Then you have to spend extra time to investigate, to figure out what's going on. The more you can remove that, then the more time you're gonna have, again, you'll be able to do more with less. Uh -huh.